Hey guys, so before we get into our podcast, we've got some really exciting news. Um, I'm pregnant. No, I'm joking. <laughs> me and Peter. Have got... so. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. Don't worry. Okay. Um, me and Peter have got our brand new book, The Therapy Crouch, in search of a happy never after. Um, it's out on the 12th of October, but it is on pre-sale now. So um, you will be able to find the link for that on this video description and on all our socials. Yeah, and we, we put a lot into this and hopefully you enjoy it. There's a lot of stories in there that we've kept back that we've put in this. So get involved. And it's been, it's been, a, it's been a really great experience writing it, hasn't it, Taylor? Yeah, it's been, it's been, a, been a bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, especially on days when we had to do like book reads and weren't speaking. That was quite interesting. And, you know... When people's trying to rush out the door to go to golf or, you know, it's in there. Right, so yeah, it's available uh, for pre-sale now. Um, <clears throat> the link is on this video and uh, in all our socials. Uh, it's out on October 12th. Enjoy. I'm so thoughtful and funny and loyal. Because I am amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Party. Break it on, y'all. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the uh, next episode of the Therapy Crouch. I'm Peter Crouch. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're like a bloody David Frost. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm a, like a broadcaster now. Oh, I mean, hello like... and welcome to the Therapy Crouch. Oh, <laughs> with me, Peter Crouch. My job now is like I'm not footballer or anything. I'm broadcaster. I mean, so I'm like very used to I kind of doing these things now. You're a baller. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a ball. You're not a bowler, as in footballer. You're a bowler who can wear cream boots to Glastonbury. Yeah, well, I can. I can. Can't I? What have you been doing this week? Well, Riding. Been... <laughs> <laughs> Are you messing? Are you messing? But I knew you were going to say that because I have been. Yeah, it's fine. It's... Fuck off, Pete. What? This is this is what I'm talking about. Like when you go to golf, how <laughs> boring is it? I like you know, when frightened. you come home and show me that friggin' scratch card with all like <laughs> pencil drawn, like score zero cards. three. Score three. Oh, I was two over on that one. Oh, can you believe I was like nine under on this? It's <laughs> so dull. Piss off with your golf and keep it to yourself. Well, you piss off about your horse riding as well. Look at this. This is a canter. This is a this is a trot. This is a rise and trot. This is a <laughs> They're all the same, babe. They're not. You're walking and running. I did a flying change. <laughs> I did a flying change. Yeah. What's a flying change? A flying change is where you're cantering on one, so on the left or the right, and mm -hmm. then you go across the diagonal and you swap your legs and the horse changes its forward leg and it's almost like it's flying through the air like this. Wow. And it is fantastic. I, um, I brought Liberty, who was off sick uh, with me to film me and... <laughs> She filmed the whole hour, but didn't get one video. So she was obviously not press and record when I was riding the so horse. Funny. The videos are amazing. And when the phone was in her hand, she was recording. Recording. The videos are, I can't even tell you what the videos are like. They're, they're like... So I had like 12 videos of just the phone in her hand, rubbing on her pocket. Because, <laughs> you know, she wasn't press and record when she was filming me. And then there's just one of the whole arena. And you can You're just see like... Yeah. You can't see me, and then one second just see the whole horse's body just go past. <laughs> She's only eight, but the record it was so. I bad. just couldn't believe it, like because I was shame know, that I go riding on my own, and I'm so proud of what I achieve, and no one believes me. No, I'm joking. By the way, the only reason I said that is because we recorded before, and you said riding, and we had to cut. So we started again, so I knew what you were gonna say. That's why I said Ryan. <laughs> but I think honestly, I love I love the fact that you like that. You should have a kind of like you, have, you didn't do it for years, did you? Because you were worried because being pregnant and stuff like that and and then having the babies, you got quite scared, but you love it again. I you love fell it. back in love. I fell back in love and yeah, it's just magnificent. Do you wanna maybe address the video the listeners have sent in? Oh yeah. Got to do that. Have you seen the video? Yeah. Of the, the fella, the horse riding, mm. holding his neck. And he looks like he's like riding really fast and it's basically walking. I don't know why you're saying that. I don't understand what you mean. Because he's out the saddle like a jockey would be on the final like hurdle. Because he's gripping with his... He's well, why is he standing up? Because he's gripping with his thighs. 
That's one thing I, I've had to learn, like loose, loose at the thighs. <laughs> oh, you know, you're not joking, you know how to learn that. <laughs> You've been in that department for years. <laughs> You're an absolute disgrace. I don't know why I put up with this. Loosen up, mate. <laughs> Relax it, you know what I mean? Finished. But this horse that I'm riding is so big, you could actually get on it. Really? It's like 18 3. It's probably too big Absolutely for me, really. Absolutely massive. What a beautiful horse, though. Oh. Look. I really want it. God, I just don't. But I'm not allowed. It's expensive for us, isn't it? Like, you've got to really love it if you want to get that. But I do. I do. Yeah, but you haven't been enough to, to, to The only reason that. I haven't been is beca just because I've been too busy with work. Like, if, if I had my choice, I'd do it every single day. But, mm. you know, it's, it's an expensive sport. But, you know, it's... But it is lovely. Like, I looked at my little girl who's eight, um, just really getting into it now, isn't she? And it's so nice because she wants to go down there and do all the kind of mucking out and the yeah. brushing of the horse. It, like, it, it's just a nice kind of pastime. Brushing the horse. Yeah, well, you know, that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Grooming. Grooming, sorry. We sound like we've had a dull week. Well, no, you went horse riding and um, I didn't... I think what you've I got do? a wine, haven't you? Well, I've been working quite a bit. You, you're really upset, you know... The past few weeks, the weather's been incredible. Mm -hmm. And perfect golf weather. <coughs> perfect golf weather. And Pete... It's been tough, that. Hasn't been able to play because he's been, been so play. busy. I've been busy, yeah. Obviously, like, I've got a film out on Amazon, right? And I had to do a lot of promo for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, That's promotion for you, people who aren't in show. If you're not you're in the, uninitiated. If you're, not in the, if you're not in the business. <laughs> you know, promos, like, we call it promo in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a film out, so I had to do some promotion for it. Uh, so, like, yeah, lots of interviews, that kind of thing. Like, BTSs, oh, well, it's VTs. It. Yeah, VTs, yeah, videotapes. For... <laughs> is that what it is? It actually being videotaped? VTs. VT, is it? Yeah. Yes, like VTs, you know what I mean? Like, videotape for those not in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of that going on. Mm. Crouch rest is back. Uh, I know this is not... Shouldn't be talking about it on this pod. No, I want you to you talk You know, there's a lot of organising to do. There's a lot of... Basically, not just because the football season's finished. Oh. It, I, I could have just finished, but I'm not. I've, not I've, I've got stuff on. And I actually want to go on holiday, so I'm cramming a lot of it in before I go away. Yeah. But we, I, I think it's... Crouch rest, crouch rest is actually a good thing to talk about because, you know... All the dweebs that listen and listen to the Peter Crouch podcast, <laughs> like they know about it, but all the great people who listen to our podcast, <laughs> mm. they probably don't know about it. So let's tell our great audience mm. what it's about. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just about, how do you describe it? It's, I mean, it's a good lot of fun. So basically Crouch Fest is an extravaganza of fun. It's, it's like a live podcast of the Peter Crouch podcast slash festival. They have music artists and we had Kasabian. We had, you know, So Solid Crew. We had Ollie Mears. We had Paul Potts. We had ex-footballers, you know, England yeah, was, players. Yeah. You know, it was, it's it's insane. And for those who follow the Peter Crouch podcast, there was so many of the anecdotes that run throughout the series, like on the show. And it was, it's back. Yeah, but you know what? You've been helping me as well. You've been helping the organisation. Yeah, but you don't well. let me. I do let you do. I do. I, this is I, my wine. I want you involved and I want you to help, you know, to a point. No, I was so proud because obviously with, with the last Crouch Fest, you know, I know you were working so hard on it and, you know, everyone was back. We, we sold 12,000 tickets with no one knowing what was going to happen. <laughs> Isn't that bad though? You know, it's, like, it's insane. It. It's it absolutely absolutely insane. insane. So... When you were saying we've got so solid crew to Kasabian to friggin' Ollie Mears, I was like, what on earth are you doing? Yeah. And it was the most incredible show. It's like bang, 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 bang of fun. It's just... You didn't have much faith in me last time, though. No, because I live with you. You were worried <laughs> and I said, listen, just relax. We will build and they will come. <laughs> <laughs> I had faith in the audience. I knew they'd come through. And it was epic. Mm. What a great night. 
It was a great night. Hopefully it's the same this time around. So you've been busy planning that? Busy planning with that. Well, yeah, busy with all of it. Like the, the football stuff, but then I just sort of crammed in everything else really and obviously the film and like, I want it to do well. So I want it to obviously, I want people to watch it because I know once they watch it, they'll enjoy it. Um, what do you mean? Well, like, you know, because it's easy to just not watch it. Do you know what I mean? What I'm saying is like, I know that when people watch it, they'll enjoy it. That but it's just no sense. Yeah, it does because the reason you do the promotion is to get people to watch it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Get get it on people's radar because I'm proud of it and I'd like I'd like people to to enjoy it. Because mm. I know they will because I know I would if I was. I love I, you, I'm Adrian. <laughs> I wasn't me because I am amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not like that, you knob. <laughs> I'm just saying it's. I'm proud. I know of it. if good. I watched that movie about me, I'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when um, do you remember when I was drunk and I was like I would just love a to be friend my like friend yeah. I would love to be my friend I'd love she said to me genuinely like God's on it like deadpan God I'd just love to be if I was like what was it I'd love to be my own friend I'd love to be my friend I'm so thoughtful and funny and loyal <laughs> I actually you just added that on yeah well I just said I'd like to be my own friend. Yeah, that's mad. The other one that she told me, which I find astounding, is for a funeral, she said um, she would like Simply the Best by Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Like, deadpan, like, you can't choose Simply the Best yourself, surely. You can. Why? Because you can. Simply the Best. Yeah. Better than all the rest. <laughs> Better than anyone, anyone you've ever met. <laughs> uh, I find that mind blowing. But I wasn't saying simply the best as me. I was thinking about the simply the best song would be a, a song from me to my funeral audience. Do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, is that where you're coming at it from? That's where I'm coming. Not, not. It's not about me. It's about. It's a. It's basically my thank you to. My crowd, funeral crowd. I'm calling bullshit on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. yeah. I think she's bullshit. got out of that. So, if you time. think I've just thought of that now on the spot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Bull, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> no, 100%. you're going. You're, so, like, when I'm off, say so if I die after you, which won't happen, by the way, but she's adamant yeah. that I'm the, that dying after, right? She goes first. So, when I'm up on stage and I'm crying, I'm just what an amazing woman. I loved her so much. This and that. Here's the song she wanted to play for, for, for you all. Simply the best. <laughs> <laughs> like David Brent's in the office, isn't it? Better than all the rest. No, Better than anyone. Do you reckon anyone's going to gonna think? It, oh, that's for us. Yeah. That's for us. Yeah. Well, you can say then. You can say. She wanted to play this for you lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. I can't do this podcast anymore. What do you it's, mean? You're just mad. You're too funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> I find it. I find it astounding. Simply the best. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, you can make fun of however you want. It was for my my congregation. <sighs> it's for the congregation. For the congregation. It wasn't for me. No. no. God. What would you have? <laughs> Do you know what I like my funerals? I don't know how we've got onto this. <laughs> <laughs> funerals. How's this happened? Um, no, I'd like my funeral to be like a kind of celebration of of life, you know. Oh, that's like, funny. <laughs> oh God, how original! <laughs> no, no shit, you're like saying it's and then it's up when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! I've just had an idea. My funeral is going to be a celebration of my life. A requiem, if you will. The best. <laughs> Better than all the rest. <laughs> Modesty. That was her. That was her famous thing. She was. She was just so modest. <laughs> Shut Simply up. the best <laughs> on her request. No, um, every funeral's a celebration. No, I know it is, but what I'm saying is, I think I'd like to do things slightly differently. I don't know, like I don't know, I have a few kind of <laughs> Swedish house mafia, like kind of yeah, some some funny elements to it, you know, some fun. Like felt like I've lived life. With a smile on my face, you know what I mean? Like, and I'd like people to go in smiling rather than crying. You could, like, bury you in a clown suit. <laughs> <laughs> you would as well, you little knob. You probably would do that to me. I wouldn't. 
You would. What is a bit of a nightmare is I've, I've seen, you know, when they're carrying floodlights out of football stadiums, it's in a bag <laughs> and they're, they're fucking so long. And regularly on Twitter, I get people sending to me, oh, Peter Crouch, rest in peace, Peter Crouch. <laughs> God, they're God, carrying a floodlight. <laughs> but like, if you think about my, my, my whatever, what's it called, coffin. Yeah. It is gonna I don't be, want to talk about that. But it is going to be longer than the average coffin. Well, I'm going to um, cremate you anyway and make a massive diamond ring. Do you know what, babe? Let's get into some audience wines. They always cheer us up. Yeah. I hate the fact my fella is away. There's no trainees all over the... Trainees or trainees? She's written trainees. Trainees? Like she was trainees. <laughs> I hate the fact when my fella is away, there's, there's no trainees. Trainers. You don't say trainees. I know, so yeah. it's, I don't it's get throwing it. me off. Yeah. So trainees <laughs> is what someone, a scouse person calls trainers. Trainees. But written down is like, I know what, if you said our oh, trainees, I'd know what they were. <laughs> Pete, where's my trainees? <laughs> oh, that wouldn't bother me at all, but written down. But you saying trainees yeah, is like blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind as well. <laughs> oh my God. I hate the fact my fella is away. There's no webs all over the house. <laughs> webs? <laughs> There's no traps. 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 Oh, webs. No, there is webs and traps. I webs, aren't they? Yeah. Webs and traps. Yeah. Traps. What is that? Traps. That is mad. That so much. You lot are mad. I hate the fact when my fella is away, there's no trainers anywhere in the house, all over the house. Then the actual minute he's back there, they're all over the place. Three pairs in the living room already. He's only been back 24 hours. So just leaving shoot yeah I do that as well uh. I know I hate it Lit there's literally a shoe shop in our house from Peter and I've I've put like I hate people walking in my house with shoes on so I leave a basket of slippers next to the door I've got a full basket with multiple brand new slippers that anyone can wear and no one does the only time people use the slippers that are supposed to be for indoors is to like get on out the car or the garage and like walk him. Like you stood on the rim again yesterday with that slipper full of mud, mm -hmm. didn't you? I did. Yeah, that was into, that was that was bad. I just think slippers. I didn't know for indoors. I didn't know it was. Um, they were wet, especially Ugg slippers because the suede, the sole. It's not like a rubber slipper sole. Mm. Oh, I'll bear that in mind in the future. But my other thing is, is like when you're going out, like you put shoes by the front door. And I know I'm going to wear them the next day. So what's no, the babe. point of putting them on? What's the point of actually putting them away and then getting them out and putting them on again? And I just know I'm going to go to bed and just come down and just like, I'm going to go out the door and just get, get in them on the way out. Well, I've got a shoe cupboard as well that, that that's closer to the door that you could put them in. I don't know. Do you want to read this one? I have a weekly whine about my husband. I recently, I recently went away for a week with my three-year-old. Due to the nature of my husband's job, he couldn't join us. I knew the week away for him would consist of daily trips to the pub, mates over, countless mess and takeaways. Let's not be naive. However, upon return, he told me he had done a full house clean to welcome us home. I thought, amazing, what a great husband. Yes, you would be led to think this too, right? It's almost impossible to believe. But as I walked in the front door, I was hit with it. Granted, I had hoovered. Granted, he had hoovered, but only downstairs. And he had done the washing as he put it in the washing machine and turned it on, but had not taken it out. And he had done the washing up, as in he put in a sink full of bubbles ready for me to do it. And he cleaned the bathrooms. Don't be daft. He had just put the cleaner in the toilet, not quite the spotless house I was promised. Okay, right. So he said he's cleaned the house, and in his mind he probably has, but he hasn't. Mm. Really. Good job, Bob. Okay. T to be honest, I think women are t to blame for this as well, because, what? Oh, I, t I don't know what you're about to say, but I totally agree. <laughs> because we just let them get away with it. Like, we let them get away with it, so they just keep acting stupid and keep doing it. Yeah, and also, when you do something well, you invariably have to do it again. So if you do something badly, you'll never be asked to do it again. So if I, like, for instance, if, I, if you came home and I'd clean the house from That's top to bottom... That's why I have shit in bed, Pete. You do... <laughs> <laughs> Boiled at my own game. <laughs> Darn you, woman. 
I know, but that is the thing. You know what I mean? Like, if I clean the house from top to bottom, right, you, you'd then expect me to do that, like, every time. So, I don't, and you don't. Yeah, but why do men, how come men don't mind filth? <laughs> we love uh, filth. Mess. <laughs> we don't mind it. We fucking love it. <laughs> I think you're on the wrong podcast today. You. <laughs> That's a joke. So I was with a girl the other day who'd manifested her dream man. Really? Mm. What does that mean? So she was, you know, have you heard of like the secret and stuff like that? Oh, if you believe it, then you'll achieve it. Yeah. I believe, I believe like in... Look nailed it. <laughs> I, <laughs> it just happened that. I believe in believe to ach and achieve. Because, do you know, before I won Strictly, mm. I was standing there waiting for it to be announced. And have you heard that that line out of Happy Feet? Where they go, if you will it, it will be yours. Yeah. I said that in my head. And then the announcement is on Really? I swear to God. But obviously, that goes with like hard work and stuff like that. But she'd ma she'd manifested a dream man. To, so to, what's she to done? Everything. She's just gone like, what, what, this, I'm only settling for this? Like or? a list. A list. Yeah. But I'll bet you that list, that sort of involved lots of things. Like, what, what's that involved? Like, what, chef, you know, clean, good Hung looking. Hung like a donkey. You know, what's on the list? What's Hung on like a list? donkey. Hung like a donkey. <laughs> God. What is on the list? Well, all of the above. Yeah. Mm. What would your list be if you could manifest... Fit, not a nag, beautiful, funny, loyal, like a good work ethic, nice family <laughs> values, great with the kids, probably let me play golf, not give me a rake. Um, nice, all round, good person. I was nine out of ten of them. Yeah. There was a couple of little digs in there, but yeah. most of them, <laughs> all the ones that. No, but really, that, is is there like certain? You're ones? all of them, babe. You tick all the boxes. No, but is is the, is the set because? But I don't tick all your boxes because no, you're you, saying you've you already like... said to me before that you said <laughs> if I have <laughs> if I if I have my time again, if I have my time again, you would get like the chef, the um, the what was the other one like the clean freak? No, it's not that. No, that's what I was just about to say to you. But realistically, there must be like qualities in me missing that you would like. Because it would be handy if I could like, you know, speak five languages. Stuff like that. Yeah, but is I that, would is that, that like, would you rather have, I'd rather have someone like, yeah, if you could speak five languages, it'd be handy. But it's not on like the to-do list, is it? You know what I mean? Like, I'd, I'd, I'd make, let's be honest, but I'm only like, joking. Like, you would like, like me to be like, would you, would you like me to be able to um, like build things or no. be a better cook? Mm. <laughs> it's not, that, not about being a better cook it's about you know like Liberty trying. like my friend Liberty yeah like it's like yeah but she hasn't got gourmet. kids yeah but it's not about having kids there's loads of people with kids who have who are an amazing cook yeah but you're busy working you know you've got the kids like I, I, I wouldn't expect you to have gourmet dinners have you had a fucking dinner yesterday no you're a good chef but you, you have given up a bit no, because I can't think of anything to make. What about Abby being a sports fan? Would that be a big, big one for you, Pete? Nah, do you know what? I quite, like, I quite like her not being a sports fan or a football fan. I don't, like... That's for me and my mates, you know what I mean? It's like, I wouldn't want... Mm. You wouldn't want me, I don't think you would want me to be into what you're into. I would. No, really, though. Like, if I said, oh, my God, darling, what are you wearing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and you went... <laughs> like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear this suit tailored with this one, and you know these shoes. Do you think well, these are to die for? These shoes are to die for. <laughs> you go, shut up. I'd quite like that. You wouldn't like that. Do you know what I'd quite like? You know, if like knowing like the hob breaks or something. Yeah. And you just go, Come, excuse me, I've got babe. that. And just went, Ch -ch -ch, and just yeah. fixed it. I'd like to be more like that kind of DIY person. You know, my friend built their own baby a cot. From wood. Really? Yeah. I'd love to be able to, I'd love to be that person. But while they were carpenting, 
I was kicking a ball around. <laughs> yeah, but baby, you can't dine out on kicking a ball around. Well, you I have done for this far. And I put, put you, um, that was like five. So what I'm saying is, like, you know, if you're going to be kind of like good at something, then you have to put kind of all your dedication into that. Like, I reckon there's loads of whatever people that are doing really well at something. Oh, might not be good at DIY as well. You know what I mean? You might be the best pianist in the world. You haven't got time for carpentry. You might be the best carpenter in the world. You haven't got time saying, for being a like, pianist. You're saying excelling at one thing. That's what I'm saying. But I don't you... excel at anything. That is, a, that is not true at all. Get eat it, Yeah. <laughs> I don't excel in one thing, like you're saying, like a pianist or... You do. <laughs> you do as a pianist. It shouldn't be funny, but it is. Um... <laughs> Don't excel at penis. <laughs> because Pete's just mentioned a penis. <laughs> I excel in penis. <laughs> um, no, I think you do excel. You do. Like you've got the... the what, what annoys me, and I'm going to get it out there on the podcast now, right, yeah. is that you have the most incredible voice, that singing voice. Oh, shut up. It's like when Ariel got her voice taken off her. It's like... It's a, it's, it's a, it's a nightmare that... People can't hear this it's thing. You know what I mean? You are Ariel. I wish I was Ariel. I'm shit at swimming. <laughs> I haven't got her hair. <laughs> I haven't got her hair. <laughs> Stink of fish, though. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, um, no, like, what I'm saying is you've got a gift there. Your gift is beauty. You have singing voice, you know, you're dancing. You've dancing. You've uh you've proven that. You've got w w an array of talents. Thanks, babe. We well, really have. I, I mean that. <clears throat> so have you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but like my talents, I think I think you know, I'm quite sporty, you know, I mean? maybe sport. Um I'm quite sporty. <laughs> but other than you're that, an England football player, <laughs> you absolute Muppet. Uh, uh. Quite sporty. Yeah, but actually. like what I'm saying, I'm never going to excel in culinary or carpentry areas. But we could. This could be the next phase of our life. It's never too, never too late. No, it's, it's not. So, what do you want to do? Right, let's say it right now. What? Where are you going to go in this next year or two? Languages, like to be a better wife to me. It's just, it's really simple. It's just, it's just less. <laughs> Kind of grief for for me. It's just a bit more less grief. So that's all. It a is. bit more less grief. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more less grief. It works <laughs> somehow. I think. Well, that's just not manifest all you like because that's not gonna happen. Just behave then. <laughs> <laughs> As Loads of people <laughs> have said turning thirty for them. They're a bit worried about it. Like obviously turning thirty. Fucking hell. I know, insane, but we don't. Lots of people have said that. Obviously, for me, turning 40 was quite scary. I'm 40 now, you know? You're 42. I know, but still, I turned 40. Mm. So turning 30, talk us through your experiences. How was it for you? Were you worried when you were 29 and you entered that 30s? God, I wish I was 29 now. My God. Great age. <laughs> <laughs> My mum said she was at the prime of her life when she was 40. Really? Yeah. Felt the best, confidence-wise, looked the best, you know. Mm. So I'm hoping that's going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I was like prime of my life, like when because I, I always think of prime as being like where I was playing football the best. But I reckon I'm probably, I'd say, slightly more attractive now than I was then. That's that tan. Is that tan Do you, you agree with that or not? Do I agree? Yeah. You're the one. I probably you, think you're the best looking them. when you played for Portsmouth. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a hard no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so no. Okay. I'm joking. You're I'm not. Jo I'm not. I, am <laughs> I am joking. I think you're absolutely. I gorgeous. thought I'd improved a little bit. You I are... might be going downhill a little bit now, but I thought I'd got slightly better. Oh, because I'm thinking, like, I was thinking when I was at Southampton, I saw a picture of a day at the worst barnet. Oh, I liked your hair then. No, I had a big skin thing. It wasn't good. Um, Portsmouth, was, I was improving. 
But like second time round in Portsmouth, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That time. I've, like my favorite picture of you, and and when and that England picture, that was the same time, wasn't it? Yeah. You were in your prime then, I think. Okay, so <laughs> how old were you then? God, so that's ten years ago. So I'm, I'm basically I've gone now. <laughs> I was like that. It goes, to be fair, it was probably started like that. I went up a little Remember bit. Remember that pigeon? Like, like a little hill. Yeah. You know, like that. Just the a big little, dipper. Like a t- <laughs> Remember that pigeon that flew out of your car bonnet that was trapped in there for a day? Yeah, and you yeah. went, oh, it's escaped. It's fine. It's fine. Then. Yeah, yeah, okay. Where am I now? Five. No, absolutely. No, babe. Am I still a six or not? You're a 20. <laughs> You're a 20. No, I'm just saying. That's my favorite picture of you. Yeah, I know which one you mean. With the long hair. Yeah. I love. I loved, but that was just a picture anyway. I think. Mm. It's just a picture that I like of you. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah, yeah. Because I've got know, I've got pictures of you. Like my favorite pictures of you are the ones like you like. Where Nineteen. You, until you, <laughs> I think you were young. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that favorite picture of me no, that you it's... love. I think I look horrific on it and I'm like 19. It's the only time. You know what girls are like in pictures, right? Where you take a picture of them and they they do a different face. And mm. you go, why are you doing a different face to the one I love seeing? So she would do, she, in this picture, is before kind of Instagram, you know what I mean? Where you do have to do an Instagram face. So it's like a big beaming smile. That's the one I like, you know? But like, I don't know, it's like girls in general now. I don't now. like smiling. Even yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like girls are so obsessed with like how Instagram, <laughs> they don't do a proper smile. I like smiling in life, but not on pictures. Yeah, because I hate my teeth. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like everyone's worried about. Like the best days were the ones where you could take a picture and you didn't have a clue because you couldn't look at it. Mm. So you took a picture, and that was it. And then you develop it later and go, "Oh, I look terrible in that one," and you deal with it later. Like nowadays, it's like lie on the floor, get low. The f- yeah, like and let's not smile. I, I do find smile. It bizarre. I listen. I know when I smile and laugh, my my teeth protrude like a horse. No, right? you don't. But I don't stop it because of that. Yeah, but I always make you smile on pictures. I would say to you, smile, don't I? It's hard, but I know what you mean because it's hard to do a natural smile when someone takes a picture. Mm. So hard, isn't it? Like, yeah. If I do a na- like a natural smile, so if you make me laugh now, I'm going to smile like that. For instance, is your like, is your smile? But if someone goes, I'm just going to take a picture. Uh, just smile. I go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your fake smile when I'm like, let me take a picture of you on Father's Day and you're sitting there like that. <laughs> I don't know why my eyes close and I go. Jack's, our <sighs> baby Jack's got the funniest smile, like his face. He's the most beautiful child. <laughs> and then he does this smile when um, when he's just like playing around, smiling, natural, natural, absolutely gorgeous. And then I'm going, Jack, do a smile. And he turns into Bette Midler from Witches. He, go, he does that little face and he's got like two teeth and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Johnny's smile? Yeah. Oh my God, that was amazing. Paul Daniels. Just, Paul, Paul Daniels. Daniels. <laughs> he looked like a mixture between Paul Daniels and Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> what colour's your hair, Johnny? Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember your 30th birthday? That was yeah. an epic one, wasn't it? When you turned 30, I did, did that big birthday. Yeah. It was brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah. But I think, I honestly think, a, like, it does wind me up a bit when, like, people are in the 20s, like, oh, God, I'm so old, I'm getting so old. You're like, oh, fuck off, 10 years older than you. I think it's I think it's a thing that people like to say. Yeah. Genuinely. I think it's like, oh, I'm so old. Like, it's a, as if they're... I know it's a cliche, but age, age ain't nothing for a number, is it? <laughs> no, no. Do you know what I mean? You're only as young as the girl you feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still in your prime, baby. <laughs> your prime, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you are but I say to yeah. my dad like what well, my dad's like 63 and he's like I feel 20 still in my head yeah. how old do you feel that was funny you know with dad, I remember your dad telling me I was in the pub with him and he went it's so weird it's like you're but you're stuck in a in your like you say probably his 20s or 30s and he said it's just amazing like when <laughs> like girls would come in the pub or whatever and he said obviously dad was good looking when he my was my dad was unreal when he, and he said it's amazing. thick black hair tan yeah. six foot two gorgeous but now, he's not that now yeah well he's not now but he, I remember he's him saying he's still gorgeous to me, but he's bald yeah but he's an older fella right and he just said it's amazing how it just it, like one minute you're that person and the next minute it's like and but you're the same person inside you're like <laughs> 
girls will walk into the pub and he's like, right, like, you know, whatever. And then now it's just like, they he's don't invisible. even look at him. Like, it's like he's invisible. <laughs> and he said, it's just amazing. Now they just walk past you and you still have the same, like, whoa, he's all right. And he's like, they don't even look at you. They look straight through you. <laughs> like you're a wall. For women, like when they have kids and everything, they do feel a little bit more invisible in that, like, hot zone. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a shame. Because you feel tired. So you feel like you look tired and kind of focus isn't you. But I don't I don't think ten and thirty is the end of the world. Ten and 30, like your I'm next big joking, birthday is fifty. Yeah, but I'm not even bothered about that. It doesn't bother me either. It's like when you go when you when you, when things really like kick in. I mean that's when that's when I'd consider like I'm look at like your dad, you know, my mum and dad, like they doesn't fifty, sixty like sixty we know sixty year olds now are having a like time of their lives. Some of our best friend Tommy's in his sixties. That's incredible. Like, he's having like what a time he's having. Mm. And that's what like twenty years from now. Thirty years for me. <laughs> you know they, they're having a good time. <clears throat> I see fellas down the golf club now. They're old, like you know, seventy, eighties. Still having a good time. It's a big lifestyle changes though from your twenties to your thirties. Obviously, you got kids and like <clears throat> houses and things like that. But, but you do mature a bit, don't you? Like the thirties. Mm. You think like the twenties are a bit of a. Although you say that, I was looking at videos of us f from two thousand and seventeen when we were in the south of France, dancing on tables, <laughs> palatic. You know that how was old? Thirties. How old were we then? Yeah, but that's six years ago. We're doing that in our forties still. Aren't we? <laughs> well, yeah, but, that, yeah, but when that. When that, it doesn't end. Well, I'm living my life back to front because, like, a lot of the time I was quite, I was probably well, I was more dedicated in my twenties than I am now. Obviously, yeah, we didn't do a lot of drinking in our twenties. We probably drank like once a week, like on a Saturday night. That's what I mean. I was so like I had to be on it for the football, didn't I? So like I'm living my life back to front, really. Like, and there's no set way of doing it. Say that again. Break it out. But there's no there's no set way of doing it, is there? You got to have a good time for as long a time as you possibly can. I, I feel like everything now is getting later anyway. Like, you know, back in the day, like say our mums and dads or their mums and dads would be like, you'd be married in your 20s, you know, you'd be getting your first house. And, like, everything's later now. It's like 30s, stroke 40s now. People are having kids, you know. I think and, and because down. people are, are more career driven now and also like the cost of living, like, you know, people are saving up to get a house and trying to get their jobs and that education before they even think about having kids and stuff like that, I think. Yeah, and it's and it's more acceptable. I mean, you were probably frowned upon, especially for a woman, maybe like you know, in the seventies, if you weren't married by the time you were like thirty, it was well, like, after, well, after there like, must be something wrong. So, from the age of thirty-five, you actually, if you get pregnant from the age of thirty-five, you actually class as a geriatric mother. Yeah, but you know that that like, like that seems outdated. No, it has to be like no, it's a technical term. I know, but it seems a bit, it seems ridiculous. You yeah, know, but, you, you can't have. I know there's probably a higher risk later on, but you know it's like everyone's no, doing their own thing now. No, but it's it's for that reason. It's it's like a medical reason. It's not like God, aren't you? You know, the, in the old days, you're all having babies at nineteen. Look at you, thirty five, giving birth to your first child. If it's not, it's like not that as a now, geriatric for that. It's a technical term. What my first baby at thirty, didn't I? But, you know, not physically, but I, uh, you know, I was involved in one. <laughs> so, what was my last one? Yeah, but you're not called geriatric father. No. I wonder if there is thing as a geriatric. Does the sperm go any? No, we look at freaking what's his name? Al Pacino just had one, didn't he? Oh yeah, he's like eight bang yard banging them all. coming out like that. <laughs> yeah, just <it's a> <laughs> dust. Like someone squeezing a bottle of talcum powder. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Christ Almighty! That's horrible, that isn't it? Oh. What about the physical changes when you turn thirty? Did you notice any changes from? Did you, like, hangovers, a lot of people say they got a lot worse with the old ego. I think one thing that, yeah, thing that is... Not for me, it wasn't for me. I, I was still playing till I was 38. Still playing football till I was 38. 40s when I retired from football, wasn't training every day. That was when I started feeling it. But when I was playing football, I just didn't even feel hangovers at all. Yeah, but I think that's because you're training. That's what I mean. Like, you know yourself when you go to the gym every day you feel so much more energised and you recover mm. quicker. Like, you know, if, when you don't go to the 
gym, you feel more lethargic. And so, so I, I didn't think. I don't think that's an age thing. I think that's a health thing. So I think you can, you can change that mindset if you allow yourself to be consumed by age. And yeah, but if you if you go and like exercise, you, the you ice can, bath's amazing for that. Yeah, though you can. You know, Breast Monkey gave me that ice bath. Mm. It's just incredible for that. For it is good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. <laughs> Just submerge yourself and keep your beers cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beers cold. I tried yeah. to put them in on the weekend. So Pete thought he could use my ice bath as a beer cooler for the party, and I, I thought it was a great idea. I, I like, think it still is a great idea. No, it's not. It's I, not like some frat house. <laughs> you know, you're not doing we that all had to the my red breast monkey. <laughs> like Chad Hogan, <laughs> party, break it on, y'all. <laughs> Spring break. <laughs> Did you say break a dawn, y'all? Break a dawn, y'all. No. Like, Happiness is the key to everything, I think. Yeah, but you do have to exercise, I think. Yeah, like, but you're happy when I you feel, exercise? That's, that's the I mean. point. Yeah. Not even like, you can't can't say that you're happy. You're actually physically happy. What it releases in your body, it makes you physically happy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's some people that are physically happy downing 38 whiskeys. That's not gonna be. That's not gonna be. That's not well, gonna be. actually, whiskey is healthy because you know all those people who um, who live to a hundred. Mm. They all say, "I have a whiskey a day." Yeah, a whiskey a day. Thin your blood. I tried to do that, but I forgot. <laughs> just got a, after a, just a bottle a day into dead. No, no, <laughs> I was gonna do that because I read so many articles about wh a whiskey a day, but I just didn't do it. I don't fancy drinking. Like they was drinking like mm. they drink it every day on suits, don't they? Yeah, like that. That's a TV show. It's, yeah, but it's literally know, only but... on films that they do that. They walk into walk someone. In they, a... they walk in and have a meeting. They go, yep. Everyone's got to get the whiskey out. Everyone, the can decanter out. Like that. What? Peaky no one's ever done that. Well. Does everyone have a decanter in the house with like crystal glasses next to it lined up? No, it's only in films. You don't walk in and say, what, "Do you want a cup of tea?" Like, does, any, does anyone really do that <laughs> whiskey thing? They just bang it down like it's nothing. I'd go, <laughs> Can I have another one? <laughs> Depends what whiskey it is. Quite like whiskey now, to be honest. Mm. But, but that's one thing, is like your taste mature a little bit. Like things like red wine, like you wouldn't drink red wine when you were 19. I didn't. You drink WK Blue? WKD Blue? Yeah, you know, Smirnoff Ice or like a Mets. Ugh. Ice like a Caribbean <laughs> twist. <laughs> but like red wine. Drinks are nice as well. <laughs> You wouldn't have a red wine, would you? Like at home when you were nineteen? No, but I'd have like a books fizz. Would you? Mm. But also, you would, I wouldn't dream of having a drink. Baby jam. Like on my like at home. Mm. No. Like would you would dream of it? Only on the street, <laughs> like nine. Or in the park. <laughs> <laughs> so to round up, how do you feel like they should be feeling in their thirties now? Great. Mm. Life begins at 40, so they've got loads of time for <laughs> that. <laughs> Who said life begins at 40? Is that what they say? Yeah, everyone says it. Right. Uh, yeah, 30's, 30's the new 20, let's be 30 honest. 30 schmerty. 30's, 30's <laughs> cool. You can enjoy your 30s. 40's so far been great. I'm enjoying them. You'll, you'll be there soon. Mm. Am I going to have a party for my 40th? Yeah. Any okay. excuse? You said simply read abroad. If you can remember. Do you remember that? Simply, Simply Rouge. Rouge. <laughs> With Dick Shucknell. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the agony abs, because you know what? We're enjoying, but we're helping. That's what's so good about this All podcast. Right. Um, hey both, absolutely love the podcast. You two really brighten up my week, and I'm always getting caught having a giggle when I'm out on the dog walk. Anyway... I've got a pretty life-changing agony ab situation I need help with and uh, I think you two could really help me. A long story short, after many months of trying, me and my gorgeous hubby have finally managed to conceive our first child, yippee. Mm. And it's safe to say that initially we were absolutely ecstatic. However, there's something that is making me lie awake at night, tossing and turning in absolute dread. Now, although I think my husband is absolutely drop-dead gorgeous, there is no other man on the planet for me. There is one thing about his appearance... Uh, <laughs> That I could change, I probably would. The colour of his hair. Oh no. If I was talking nicely about him, I would probably describe him as Auburn. 
or strawberry blonde. If I was being not so nice, I would lean towards the carrot top, copper bollocks, <laughs> end of the scale. Now, this isn't obviously a massive deal for me. When we were married and waiting on our first baby, and now I find myself lying awake night, gripped in fear that I'm going to give birth to a pasty, freckly-faced ginger baby. Oh. <laughs> My husband has spoke at length in the past of how hard his childhood was because of his relentless bullying um, he got for his hair and his appearance. I now feel... I now live in fear that I'm going to be uh, thrust upon my own unborn child. I find myself late at night running through scenarios about how to potentially spare them the cruelness of the schoolyard bullies. I could dye their hair, I could shave it off. Maybe a bit of tinted moisturiser to mask the freckles. The possibilities are endless. Do you think I'm being overly paranoid that baby brain has got the better of me? Or did you have similar worries when you were pregnant and maybe your children would take up to Pete rather than you? <laughs> <laughs> please help me calm down I need sleep ginger spiced Warrington uh, do you know what on my pregnancy video when the baby's coming out I'm like is it okay is it alive is it ginger <laughs> you got that on video as well genuinely <laughs> I don't know why why is it seen as a negative though because, like, well, you've got ginger in your side of the family, so I was I did worry about it a little bit. But, you know, my sister's boyfriend's ginger, mm. and he's fab. Like, it doesn't matter what colour. Yeah, but gin ginger is like the, it seems to be the last acceptable kind of, like, <laughs> prejudice. Like, why, like, you know, everyone, you know, we're not allowed to say anything, are we, about anyone, really, yeah. your appearance-wise. But ginger somehow is acceptable. Fair ginger game. tall. Ginger, ginger's height. I get it loads of being tall. Yeah, yeah but like, you're allowed to say that, but you couldn't say to someone you were short or you were fat or you were this, but ginger and... Well, body shaving like and all that, right? It's, 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 all, it's all become, you know, all the rage. We're all, you know, very conscious of it, rightly so. But for some reason, ginger's excluded. Mm. Do you know what? My dad's... All my dad's ever wanted is a ginger grandchild. <laughs> he, love, he loves them. Mm -hmm. He thinks they're great. He's just like, I'd love a little ginger grandson. I'd take him to the pub. Look at the head on him. You know, he just, oh, he, just, head on him. he just absolutely love one. I think there's nothing cuter than a little ginger kid. And mm. it makes me want to, it makes me so angry that little kids with red hair would get bullied for that. It's well, absolutely you'd, you'd disgusting. Hope not, but you know what? It's like, you know, people do do say about about them yeah, but kids are cruel kids are like you know even some of the stuff like Sophia's told me recently in air school what they, mm. they all say to each other it's absolutely disgusting mm. but it's it's a kid thing isn't it like they're just horrible to each other yeah, it can be yeah, it can be it can be harsh it can be harsh out there but, like, the world, but I think, the, I think better, the, the Disney films <clears throat> are amazing like you know Ariel um, who else has got Brave the red mm. hair yeah, yep. Brave's good. Favorite. Yeah, our, our friend's got a, a little girl with the most incredible red hair, wrinklets down to a bum. Oh. Right, well, in summary, I don't think you can... <clears throat> I think just enjoy your baby. The baby's a miracle. Like and also, cares. no matter what, what you know, you get, you're always going to love it, aren't you? So and you're always going <laughs> to think it's the best looking thing in the world. Yeah. No matter what, even if, you know, we did. I mean, listen, we <laughs> got... I think our kids have, like, when it was one couple, when they were babies, I was like, yeah, it's gorgeous. No, I, I, was, talk I, I was talking to her mum about this yesterday because she had a little baby and she was one. And she was gorgeous. She was a little pudding, gorgeous. And I was saying about when Lib was a baby and, you know, mm. I used to try and put her in, like, really cute... Remember she had that tutu on? Cute tutus and she'd look like literally a silverback gorilla. <laughs> In a tutu, and she had <laughs> You're like a rhinoceros, a rhino, a rhino, <laughs> and a hair. She had two strands of hair in a straight line. She was like Lloyd Christmas, wasn't she? It was hilarious. And we used to, I, I used to think she was the best looking thing I've ever seen. And look back, mm -hmm. bitch, like she's stunning Jesus now. As well. Christ, so funny, uh, so funny. Hey, Abby and Peter, I have an agony ab SOS that I need your guys' advice on ASAP. I'll cut straight to the chase. It is my boyfriend's dress sense. When we first met, it wasn't something I really took too much notice of. He certainly wasn't a style icon <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. A bit beige, if anything, but generally 
very inoffensive. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of years and we are now living in the very edgy Hackney Wick area of East London where my boyfriend has befriended some of the natives and have taken it upon himself to go through what he des describes as a glow up. At first, this is something I encouraged, even if I didn't totally understand it. When he told me he was going for this from his, from his smart shore back and sides to an 80s style mullet, I said, yes, go ahead. When he left the pawn tash on his face after Movember was over, I wasn't elated, but I accepted it. However, however, recently his choice of clothes are leaving a lot to be desired for. It's a constant mismatch of oversized, colour-clashing, mothball-ridden, questionable attire. He loves using the label Vintage as a badge of pride, whereas to me, he looks like a bag. The other day, he came home in yellow baggy trousers, a red crew neck jumper, and all I could see was him as a man who used to present art attack. <laughs> I think the final nail in the coffin for me was that when I saw him browsing online for a pair of secondhand dungarees, I mean, a grown man dungarees. wearing dungarees. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't know if I'll be able to sustain this relationship at the thought of him coming to meet me and my friends out rocking up on his Dutch bike with his mullet, his shit tash blown in the wind, clad in Birkenstocks, white stocks and an oversized pair of adult dungarees. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one, isn't it? I think he's moved to like Hackney. I think men who were like... And he's gone, he's tried to go trendy. Mm. And he's obviously not trendy. So I like a man who's like, has natural style and doesn't like think about what they're wearing. He just puts something on and it looks good. Someone who's like deliberately going for a look. Knocks me sick. Especially because if that looks not them as well, it's like all of a sudden like... Like if I just ramped up my style, went right, I'm going like really long barnet, like skateboard dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> I know you do. But that's why I've been, well, I've been thinking about it. <laughs> but no, I you know what yours, I mean? Like vans, like, um, kind of like... I love vans. Load of tattoos and stuff like Don't that. Don't like tattoos. Um, no, joke. <laughs> no, I don't like tattoos. I, um, I like your style, which is quite... Um, yeah, but you're going to say that, aren't no, you? No, what's the... You're going to say that. I'm going to say the Vicar of Dibley. What's up the Vicar of Dibley? Talent of Mr. Ripley. Yeah. Vibes. Very, very yacht club. Yeah. Pete looks super classic, like classic chic. Below deck. Below deck. <laughs> classic Al Maffi chic. <laughs> I'd like to think it's called. No, you suit like classic, you R know. Riviera. Riviera vibes. <laughs> oh, I'm, listen, I'm quite, I'd like to think quite, don't know, I don't know what I'm going for, but just... Oh, uh, it's not too inoffensive. I've it's got no similar idea. to what he was probably beforehand. I've got no idea who I am. You're not. C f clothes wise. I'll be glancing. <laughs> you can carry off anything, I think. I like you. S you could go for any look. I feel like a bit of a fraud reading out this. But he's been rooting for a vintage because this is like an original. <laughs> this is Paul McCartney's band. This is an original 70s jumper. Yeah, but you're cool as fuck. This, this is his second band after the Beatles. You look a bit art attack on that. I know, I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is art attack. This you... is an art attack. This <laughs> is art attack. I used to love Neil, that. Neil Buchanan? Yeah, very good. Oh, nailed it. Very he good. scouts him as well. Was he was he? like the only scouts person on the telly, and I was like, this is from Liverpool. Was he? I think so. Mm, he was, uh, maybe the Willow, but yeah. Mm. Wool. <laughs> <laughs> bit antwacky. He was a wool him. Like now, you're stylish, though, aren't you? Like, uh, you, no. could, you could carry off, there's a, you know, you could probably carry off anything, I think. I think you could. No. You definitely could. 100%. No. You came in with Justin Bieber the other day. Remember? No. You had the Justin Bieber outfit when you come for the dog walk and I was like, oi, oi, it's Bieber. Yeah, but that's because I was cold and I had to wrap up and put a beanie on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you, yeah. you but are... Certain things. Imagine me putting on a pair of dungarees, right? How much would you laugh? <laughs> like, seriously. If I, if I went, um, we're going out for like theatre in Hackney right? I and I went dungarees. right and I put I on a beanie hat and dungarees <laughs> what would you say to that well you'd look ridiculous so how much how much laugh now oh I'd love the I'd laugh me the, how the funny with a pair of dungarees <laughs> you, you know what I feel I don't understand why you know if you're looking for maternity clothes there's always dungarees in, in, the, in the collection 
Like, yeah. no one wears fucking dungarees apart from a baby, maybe a child. But then when you're pregnant, mm. in everything, if you go to like H and M maternity or blah blah maternity, there's always fucking dungarees. There's two. There's two reasons to wear dungarees, and it's pregnant or painting. Painting. Why? Painting. Why? You know. You know why they have them? For why painting? is that? Because they've got the pocket on the front. Put your paintbrush in if you're up a ladder. You can put your paintbrush in there and then climb up your ladder and then... So were they invented for painting? Well, I don't know that for a fact, but l logically, yes. Farmers wear dungarees, do they, as well? Some farmers. Like American farmers. Big straw hat and a pair of dungarees. That's a scarecrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why scarecrows wear dungarees is yeah, because no one else wears them. <laughs> so they give them spare clothes to the fucking <laughs> scarecrow that's going to leave out in the field all year. Dungarees are mad. Like, that's... I hate dungarees. They're just repulsive. There are, because there's a few people like over the years, like I remember this kind of 90s kind of rappers used to, there's a few of them at it. Kid and Play, that kind of era. Who's the other one? Who's the other one who's saying, um, uh, I want a salt and pepper. They were dungaree vibes, weren't they? I want to sit. That was their Colour Me Bad. Co Colour Me Bad, no, but they, they did uh, oh. push it. Push it real good. <laughs> <laughs> That's salt and pepper, but yeah. I'm sure she had it was either salt or pepper had the um had the dungarees. Lisa Left Eye Lopez used to. So I'm saying it was that there was a kind of nineties R and B vibe to dungarees. But they come in and they go back out. I think you look like a complete drip in dungarees. I think dungarees should be banned. Not everyone though. I think there's people that can carry them off. I think she should take a series of sneaky pictures of them print them all out and leave them on the bed so we can see for himself. Do you how think much... this is acceptable? Yeah. Or just say, grow up. <laughs> grow up. <laughs> all right. Hey, Pete, uh, I know this is the agony app section, but I feel like this could be uh, one I need a bit of brother advice on. He's leaving you out of this one, babe. Even though it's called the agony app. Apologies for that. Uh, I, like you, I'm have very happily married and think I couldn't have locked out any more than I have when it comes to my wife and mother of my child. I am more than aware that I'm punching in the looks department. Why She's... do all men say this? What? Well, like it's... that line? That's true. What, punching? Yeah, all men say it. Yeah, not all men. They There's do. plenty that aren't punching. Every man I know says that. To the face. Yeah, yeah. but also it's a nice, it's a nice thing for the... <laughs> He's basically complimenting. No, I know what he's doing, that's, but it, it's, yeah, but that's, that's swearing obvious. a bit, swearing a bit thin. That line. <laughs> Get a new line, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, you know, you are gorgeous. So, I, what do you want me to say? You're ugly or something? Like, you're, you're, you've done well. Yeah. You all right? You've done well. I know. You have done well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Anyway. She's the world's best mother as well uh, to our beautiful baby girl and making sure everything in our house is run smoothly as it can. When you take into account she married an absolute plant pot. There is one problem though, her feet. Okay, I get this. My wife does not take care of her feet. After years of squeezing them into heels, two sizes too small, uh, she's been left with what I can only describe as a pair of monstrous trotters. Her big toe sits basically at a 45 degree angle to the rest of her foot and all the rest of the big toes are bunched up like scared little piggies huddling in fear against the freak of nature big big toe. <laughs> <laughs> Not only this, but her poor foot health has evolved into her basically all year round fungal infection, the smell of which is enough to strip paint. I love my wife and I've told her on multiple occasions this is treatable and she should get them looked at, but she flatly refuses. As it's, it's like Jason's foot. And it's become a bit of a sticky, smelly issue for us in the marriage. Ooh. Sometimes when the mood is right and the bonk beats be, be a playing, he's like, be a playing, I find myself recoiling in horror if I am ever lucky enough to get a whiff of these nuclear-grade bio biological weapons of warfare, which is a real mood killer. Uh, I've thought about maybe getting her a pedicure treatment for her birthday, but I, fear, but I fear this is like putting a plaster on a war wound. And it also raises some ethical questions about having to put some other poor person through the experience of being up close and personal with them. Any tip-top toe tips would be greatly appreciated. Anonymous. <sighs> <laughs> That's awful. That's absolutely awful. 
horrific. Uh, so he loves her in every way. He thinks she's gorgeous, amazing mother, horrendous feet. Any smell is an issue. Breasts, B.O., feet. I remember my feet when I was playing football, like the bottom of the foot was so hard. It still is. Yeah, but not if you feel it. It's not, I know you, you might not want to. I don't mind your, I like your feet. Yeah, they are. I like your feet. I'm not. They're not nice. I haven't got a phobia of feet. I haven't either. People are obsessed with feet, either like good, like really into it or like <laughs> think they're repulsive. They just I'm feet, definitely not into it, but I'm not repulsed by it. Like I'm not repulsed by your feet. They're not terrible considering I played football for, for so long. Mine are terrible. Mine I've got one foot over. that's nice and my, my other foot, my... Show me the nice one. I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my nice one. I like it. I like my feet. Yeah. No? Where's the where's the bad one? <laughs> oh fucking hell. <laughs> I know. I've got a big I bunny. Know. I know. Yeah, because it's half a size, no, bigger than the other foot. Is it really? Well, yeah. I think so. No, they're nice your feet, man. Because on. one one um foot, the shoes, if I get a pair of shoes, it's always tight on that foot. So I'd rather get a smaller shoe because I don't want it too big on the other one and fit that one. So I'd rather have it fit the small one a bit tight on the feel like being too tight is better than too big. Mm. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, total sense. Does it? <laughs> yeah. I could, you don't couldn't want have put it better than myself. What? What? No. I don't oh, get it. Yeah. Too, many, too many men in the room. So, uh, so that's got a bit of a bunion because I'm always like squeezing it in. Oh, right. But I try, I try and have a pedicure. Oh, your feet are lovely. Often. But yeah, you haven't got poor... Poor hygiene. No, you've even like, I'm not even going to say it on the podcast. You've like put your, if I was watching telly, you've put your, my toe in your mouth, <laughs> which is disgusting. Why I know. I love you in every, in every way. So I'm, I'm happy putting your toe in my mouth. Even, you know, it was a bit cheesy. I'll be honest. <laughs> Didn't bother me. Though. It wasn't. And your, you can't you smell anyway. It from Irish. <laughs> <laughs> from Irish. If there's one thing I haven't got, that's smelly feet. And I, I know that for a fact. It wasn't or the smell, it was the taste. <laughs> you haven't really babe I love you um, I think how can we help this man I think he's just got to, he's, again he's got to tell her it's not good enough you know that that kind of smell like that I mean the way he's described it it's uh, see even like having like a bit of hard, hard skin or dry skin it's not the end of the world but the smell there's no need it's the whiff of these is nuclear grade biological weapons of warfare is how he described them no. not, not great not she and and it can be it can be addressed. Mm. You know, let's let's try and get that sorted because he loves you in every other way. Yeah. So, yeah, so be... I enjoyed this podcast. Great, I did too. Um, don't worry about turning thirty. That's all I can say because you've got you know, I've got thirteen years on you. You only spring chickens. I've, I've had a, the best thirteen years. They've been brilliant. So hopefully they're the same for you. Um, yeah, the best times of my life have been in my thirties. Oh, awesome! You know, you don't really know who you are in the twenties. You're just finding your feet. In thirties, you're a bit more sure about yourself. You've got more, a bit more. You can still have the same kind of fun. You don't feel any different. Mm. If, if, if anything, you feel better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go and enjoy those thirties. Um, stay in touch. Contact us on all your socials, uh, on all our socials, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.